Hi, hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and bring you guys the Grim Dawn Rot mod again, which is basically a mod pack for Diablo 2 uh, on Grim Dawn, and it's really fantastically done. Um, I made a video covering this like a, a couple of months ago, and I played through the game and had a blast. It's basically got all the content from Diablo 2 in it with a twist of Grim Dawn, including the difficulties, the campaign, the classes, the uh, boss fights, the uber bosses, etc. Along with like Hellfire, Torch Farming, and, and so on. So, I played a Sork Barb last time, and I really liked the character. It felt a little bit weird to play, but I really enjoyed the character. Uh, and this time I wanted to make someone completely different. So, the goal was to make a character that is completely different from the last time I played. And whereas that's semi-true, it's also semi-not, because I believe Sork is the basically the one of the stronger ones for my subclass for this character um, so i'm probably going to be playing a um, amazon sorceress so i'm going to show a little bit about the character first and then i'll talk about the build since you know that's usually the way people would prefer it um, so basically whenever i play grimdon um, in general i usually play a caster in general i typically favor casters in games they're easier for me to scale, they usually feel more rewarding, the AoEs feel, you know, clean and crisp. Uh, but this this time around I wanted to try something just completely different. I think it's it's fun to really throw around and mix up, you know, the gameplay. So I'm we're playing a bow character this go around. And the bow character is going to be themed around uh, ice, uh, mainly because as an Amazon I personally, just on sheet it looks like ice arrow, or sorry, uh, cold arrow with ice arrow along with freezing arrow uh, seems to look a lot stronger than fire arrow uh, which gets exploding arrow and immolation arrow which I personally think is pretty bad for endgame but I mean I don't really know so with that being said uh, being as we are an Amazon or a boson we get access to a lot of really cool things one would be the cold arrow that I showed you guys uh, so it's got main hand damage scaling along with flat cold a really big slow uh, and then it gets uh, the transmitter for ice arrow which gives it more flat cold crit damage which is one of the strongest basically one of the strongest uh, stats in the game along with resistance reduction in my opinion then it's got a freeze on it and a cold damage and then you have freezing arrow that adds a six meter radius so you basically can essentially prolif slash hit in a large area and the cool thing is because this part of the wet of the skill also has main hand damage we can scale flat damage and resistance shred and it will proc from this so i would like to say that we can clear like area uh packs late game and not just pure single target so the reason i want sork as a secondary class and there are a lot of good options i'm eliminating anything from grimdon i want to stick to the d2 classes um as a sorceress i would get enchant weapon which would give flat le damage percent le damage and attack rating which is good for pretty much everything on my character then I would get uh, one point in each mastery, but more importantly, cold mastery gives flat cold percent cold, which is really strong for our build. Um, and then I, if I have excess mana, I could also potentially run energy shield for flat damage or percent damage reduction. Warmth is also really good, uh, even just the one pointer in it. And then I would also get access to teleport and potentially uh, frozen armor, but I don't know if I'm going to use that. And then leveling was pretty terrible at the beginning so essentially you're going to struggle for quite a bit especially if you're playing on veteran normal i don't know if this tagged it is it says normal plus i don't know if that's actually veteran right now um but we ended up getting a rune word edge bow which rune words are really awesome in this game basically drop your haraja cube and you see everything in here so i went with edge bow uh, as it's super 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 strong for me for this early game leveling and let me just go ahead and i guess continue The other cool part is you still get your devotions, so we are working towards a, uh, a larger devotion now. I haven't decided if I want to put Blizzard on my um, my right click yet, because since Ice Arrow or Cold Arrow can get a devotion proc, we have the ability to either build it kind of more single target or more AoE oriented. I'm really happy about that as well. Uh, and then I also have a curse at the moment. Well, I guess it's, it's not really a curse, but sort of like a curse which is Inner Sight. And Inner Sight is super, super, super strong. I'm actually going to go to Act 2 here. Let me see if I can 
run you guys to the boss. This boss is uh, is pretty mad considering I don't have very good single target. I don't know if we'll get there though because I don't want the video to be too long. So the goal is I'm going to be playing this for maybe maybe about a week, maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more. I don't know exactly how far. I'd like to tackle the endgame content. There's a Wilson patch actually, a promising Wilson patch that's coming. I actually do not know the date on that, uh, but that's something I'd like to check out as well. I'm basically waiting and uh, trying to fit ARPGs in my schedule slash roguelikes up until August 11th. At August 11th, Final Fantasy XIV gets a really big patch. Um, or at least I think it's a really big patch. All I know is that there's also an early game patch coming in for the leveling phase of the game. Uh, so that's that's when I'm going to go ahead and jump in and play it. I'm going to start on... Uh, I think I have like a 57 warrior, but I'm going to start as a level 1 paladin. And we've got a bunch of people from the Discord and the YouTube coming as well to play with us, so... Uh, I really hope that I can bring some MMO content back on the stream or uh, on the YouTube, even though it may not be the most exciting of content. I just hope to make it fun. I'm really looking forward to that. And then on a side note, Ashes of Creation has been looking really, really promising, but it's still pretty far away. Amazon New World is coming out too, but that one also has a question mark due to constant delays. Hmm. Where do we go next? I think I'm just going to keep spec and crit. Crit's really good. Chance had double damage. Actually, I think Amazon's crit can proc on top of regular crit. Because I think you have regular critical strike, and then Amazon is just a chance to multiply the damage. The uh, mercenary I decided to use right now is the guy with Prayer Aura. He's the cheapest one you can get in Act 2. Prayer Aura in this version uh, actually gives you Mana Regeneration and Life Regeneration. So an early Prayer Aura saves you... <laughs> it sounds like a meme, but it honestly saves you so much gold that you don't have to spend on Mana Potions. Uh, and the way I, get, I like to look at it is if you look at Mana and mana regeneration as attack speed you can actually look at it as a as like a damage increase restart to install the latest windows updates how about take a time um never thank you very much but yeah you, you can kind of look at it as attack speed because the more regeneration you have the more attack speed you can get before you start going oom um, uh, um, until of course like end game and then at which case you're gonna that's not really the same exact thing, but in the early game it is because you can go in really easily if you start pumping the uh, levels on your skills. Oh, I can also say, uh, if it's your first time playing this, I would avoid playing Paladin only because Paladin has a extremely strong area clear passive, basically. It may make playing other builds not feel as fun. Kind of like, you know, playing the meta in like Path of Exile and then you try to make another character and it just doesn't clear as well. So that is one thing to take into account. Some, some classes have extremely good AoE, uh, but they may have changed it. It's been a long time since since I played that, to be honest. Or there may be, like, different devotion. I don't I don't think they've, there's been a devotion update recently, but could have been.
I really hope this layout stays the same. Should be... Oh wait, actually, I think it has to stay the same, because that's literally like... the square. Oh, I'm silly, I could have just ran all the way here. I think, let's see. Yeah, it is. Ah. Oh. Damn. Also, I don't know. I don't think this is on Veteran. Which makes me sad, because Veteran's so much more enjoyable. Oh. Mage Fist? Hmm. Too bad I'm, I kind of need a Cold Fist, if anything. Health is he up? 340k? That seems kind of normal though. Ooh. Yeah, this feels kind of normal. Maybe this is veteran. Or maybe my build's just shit. I don't know. It's one or the other. Hard to tell sometimes, to be honest. So the thing is that I found out with this game is that your build at endgame needs to be able to survive because. When you start fighting ubers and stuff, they will, like, run your character over. So it's important to have defensive layers. Uh, Amazon's pretty cool because Amazon can get... I think Amazon, of all the classes, gets the most uh, dodge and... Just dodge in general. Dodge slash evasion. They have, like, three passives for uh, dodge and evasion. One of them here is, like... Uh, that That is not dodge and evasion. Hold on. This one here. Chance to avoid melee attacks. And then chance to avoid projectiles. It kind of sucks that they're separated like that. But then you have this one, which is chance to avoid both of them uh, together as one node. Then Sork, I can get percentage damage reduction, like absorption. Also one of the stronger stats for surviving. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though, so we'll have to see. Um, I also don't know like what type of armor I'm going to use. Spirit gives Ellie damage. Um... Focus, or not focus, physique gives defensive ability, which is really important, and cunning gives, like, basically crit scaling. So I could drop Ellie damage scaling and go crit damage scaling instead. I just have to make sure I have the mana to sustain, uh, which we may end up just getting some sort of mana leech. Also, we'll do a lot more damage once we, once we get our devotions for resistance shredding. The main reason I'm not really killing this guy very fast is because I don't have resistance shred yet, uh, since... I just, I opted out and rushed Kraken in my Devotion because I really wanted the attack speed. It just makes the build feel so much better. Uh, and now we're on our way to Viper, which Viper will give us Elemental Resistance Shred, which is really good. Oh, the slow from the Frost Arrow is so good though and when we get teleport this is going to be awesome i don't even have to run I can literally just pew 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 and then just like teleport to the other side of the map and then pew 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 again give me some loot Ooh. arcana's death wand yikes not for us The way to Act 3 is open, so that's cool. I'll just go pop into Act 3 for you guys just to just to show you what it is. So I think I can I can put Inner Sight with a Devotion, which is awesome because I literally just tap it and it would start proccing a Devotion. And then I should be able to do Freezing Arrow with a Devotion as well. Like here, Cold Arrow, Inner Sight. Yeah, that's awesome. How, that's, that's so good. I don't know what else I would have to put from here. Maybe like... Treat? I don't I don't even know. Slow missile, maybe? Oh, Pierce. Interesting. Oh shit. Wow. That's actually really good to know. So assuming Pierce stays at about 2% per, that would be 40% chance to Pierce, and I can proc a devotion with it. So so I can kind of automate a setup. That's actually ooh, that makes the build even more interesting. Hell yeah. 
Uh, and then there's also the question of if a, if a projectile pierces, will it proc all of the other effects? And because it's considered a default weapon attack, I think pierce will make it basically freezing arrow every time it pierces a target, which is just, oh man, it's so cool. So anyway, though, I'm going to stop here. I could just keep on, I could just ramble for hours. So I'm going to catch you guys later. If you guys liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I do take Sundays off now, though, but uh, tomorrow I'll be going live with the exact character that you see now. So you can tune in if you're interested. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.